Welcome, welcome, welcome. Series. So, you know, one of the things you want to see, uh, what I would do is you can tell that you're the same want to talk, yes. right? Um, um, welcome, so welcome, welcome. We're just going out. We're just going out. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Good to see everybody, say hello. Say hello if you are, you are probably just joining because I'm just joining. Um, we have a few more minutes. I'm gonna try to get um, uh, Lore on the line. Um, it's good to see everybody. Say hello and tell us where you're joining from before we start the Meet the Miniaturist. Hey, Allie, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Oh, I'm so excited everybody's here. This is so cool. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try to get um, Lore on from Belmont Crafts. And hopefully she will join. But in the meantime, say hello and tell us where you're joining from. Atlanta, yay! Good to see you. Hello, Michigan. Hello, Greece. Awesome. And Canada. We love our Canadian friends. Good to see everybody. Um, yeah, so this, we're redoing this because we had some technical issues last week um, going on Zoom. But um, yeah, hey, um, Laura, I'm going to try to get you on um, and send you an invite um so hang on guys we have a few more minutes where we're starting before we start good to see you guys all right hang on a second let's see um do, do, do. hold on belmont i'm gonna send hopefully she'll join good to see everybody how is everybody's sunday going hi pamela good to see you <laughs> yes, we were having some technical difficulties last week with Zoom, so we decided to move this to Instagram, um, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, it'll work. We have a few more minutes before we start. Um, we're calling this at 4 o'clock. Um, hey, Florida, good to see you. <laughs> Look at you. That's so good. All right, hang on, because I'm going to try Laura again. Hey, Laura, if you're on, send a request to join, because I just tried getting you on. And I'm not hearing you, but I'm sending you another request. Um, again, we have a couple of minutes. Good to see everybody. I might as well just tell you a little bit about what's going on um, before folks start to join. Um, like I said, we tried this last week with Zoom. It didn't work, but I've got a couple of Meet the Miniaturists coming up over the next few weeks. Um, so you're going to definitely want to write this down on your calendar um, because... Uh, you know, so so next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, I am going to be interviewing with us uh, uh, for a special Meet the Miniaturist, Craig LeBenz. Now, Craig is an incredible miniaturist. Um, and so we're going to have him on and Meet the Miniaturist 3 p.m. next week. If you are not following me or if you are not... Um, uh, hold on a second. Hold on. We've got a request. Nope. Hold on. Not yet. Okay. So, so if you're not following me already, you want to get on my, my mailing list because that's really where I talk about where, when these Meet the Miniaturists are happening. Um, so next Saturday, you'll want to write that down at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then next Sunday, uh, we're going to get a virtual visual tour of the Denver Museum of Miniatures, Dolls, and Toys. Wendy Littlepage, she's the director of the museum is going to give us a virtual tour. They've got an extensive collection of over 20,000 crazy 20,000 objects in their museum and they just moved to this new space. So they've got a lot to show and a lot to share. So that's going to be next Sunday at this time, four o'clock Eastern time. So you're going to want to write that down and join. Um, these are both these events are registration only. So you're going to want to go, um, uh, you're going to want to, right now, you're going to want to sign up for my newsletter because the newsletter has the links to join and you need to join in order to get on. So, uh, so we got a couple of really great Meet the Miniatures happening. And then the following week, which is on the 21st, again, sort of these master miniaturists, I'm kind of landing these awesome interviews with master miniaturists. This is Jimmy Landers. 
This is Sunday the 21st. Uh, Jimmy Landers is a mattress master miniaturist out of Indiana who is working on an, an awesome project called 1891. It's a reproduction of a Tudor style mansion. And he's, it's in development right now. We're gonna get sort of an in process look, in progress view of construction of this miniature masterpiece. Um, so you're not gonna wanna miss that, that's for sure. And that's gonna be on the 21st. Um, I'm gonna try to get Belle, I'm gonna try to get um, Lore again. So I think she was having a little bit of trouble joining, which is damn, not happy about that. Um, yeah, we had some connection issues. Like, oh, I see her, there she is, I'm so excited, hello. hello. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So let me let me finish up with with um, with these announcements. I'm so glad you're there. Okay. It's so great. Just want to welcome everybody and uh, just remind folks that I do have, you know, several Meet the Miniatures coming up. And if you want to know what's happening and when, you got to sign up for my newsletter or follow me on my social media. Um, so, but I'm landing some awesome miniaturists uh, for these interviews, which is really exciting, including our next featured guest, which is Lorena Belmont from, hails from Mexico City. So glad we are on, so glad we got you. Um, yeah, and, finally. Yes, yes. And, you know, just to, to tell you, I, you know, obviously I scour the internet looking for miniaturists, looking for folks like Lore, who's doing really, really some great stuff. And um, this is in the realm of book binding, miniature book binding, which is incredibly fascinating to me. So we're gonna get to chat with Laura in the next few, this time that we're spending together, and we might even get a little bit of a demonstration. So with that, I will love to welcome you, Laura, to the Meet the Miniaturist. And so let's hear a little bit about you. I know you just recently graduated um, with um, a degree in museum conservation. So let's talk a little bit about what that, and then we'll tie that into your work with miniature books. Okay. Hi to everyone again. Here we go again. Yes. <laughs> Finally. And well, just like you said before, uh, I'm a recent graduate, a yeah. happy and proud yes. <laughs> recent graduate. Um, I think uh, I start to, to love the book binding in 2019 when I have to decide between take classes of paper conservation or metal conservation. Yeah. So I take paper conservation and the school give you a class of the basic book binding. So there is when I start to to love this this kind of craft, yeah. and I think for me it was just like I don't know, just like amazing. Yeah, it was like other other world to to start to to new, and I think it was just wonderful. So so in school you had to choose paper versus metal. You said, uh huh, and yeah. and so you were drawn to paper and uh, restoration of paper, antique paper, and that led to books. So, yeah. so, yes. and then how did this turn into a love of miniature books? Where did that connection happen? Yeah, I think um, recently I, dis I rediscovered a box with my Polly Pocket houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to, to play with that uh, little houses and yeah. I think what, and I thought like, oh, that's why I love miniature things. Yes. And also, uh, my mother uh, used to work with uh, cold porcelain clay, oh. and she did a lot of different things, um, food, furniture, uh, dolls, and anything you can imagine. So, so your mom worked in did. miniature? So your mom worked with yeah. different mi mi materials in miniature? Yeah, just, just let me show you something yes. I have. Here. Yes, yes, yes. She, she usually used yes, to yes. do this kind of things. Yeah. This is a pin. You can use it every season. I mean, every Christmas, Halloween, and a lot of different things. She she always loved to to make this this kind of miniature thing. Oh, that's lovely. And and maybe unconsciously I grew up with that love of miniature things. Or, or consciously she was making miniatures yeah. right in front of you. And you have <laughs> yeah. some of her miniatures that she made. Yes, yes. Awesome. That is awesome. So, so, so there is this love of miniatures and now there is this, this study of antique objects and books and book yes. binding. And so now you're making books in small scale and binding them yes. from scratch, right? Yes, yes. That's yes. True. And so when did you start making books in miniature? 
Uh, I think everything is start in, in 2020. Just last year. Yes. Just, just last recently. year. Yes. So what? Because I had the time for do whatever what I want to do. Right. I mean, there are some very specific. So, so there are some. There are a lot of different skills involved in making miniature books. Yes. It's it's um there there's it's not just one thing. So yes. Tell us a little bit about the process of making mm -hmm. a miniature book. Well, uh, I think I don't work with the uh, scale uh -huh. because when you when you went to a library, you saw a lot of different kind of books. That's right. Uh, don't have the same structure or the same size or right. the same binding. Yeah, a lot of different things, and and I think I just like well, I want to make a, a do a produce a book. I just like well, I will start. No, it's like. Yes. Just my, my imagination and my creativity is just like, yes, just go for it. Right, right. So, so you're not held to a specific scale dimensions. You, you just create based on what you want to make and what size yes. you want to make it. But obviously, it's small. Yes, yes. Just recently, I, I realized that it's like a dollhouse scale. I think it's 112 scale. 112. But I, I like to work with a little bit more... Um, bigger a little books. bigger uh -huh. yeah yeah i mean there there are there are pros and cons and there are you know there you know there are benefits to making bigger and then there are challenges to making smaller as you can imagine yeah. that when you go smaller it's uh, probably more difficult in some ways would you say yes yeah, yeah. i yeah. think uh not for now i i think i love just like the two inches size like my my ideal yeah um, and i think i i just trying to to prove every technique i i'm learning because it's very important to know the materials you are working on yeah because if you know those things you can do everything you want you know that possibilities yeah and i think it's just amazing what you want to create and what you create yeah so well, I, I notice you use a lot of leather and it, you yes. do leather bound books and they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful. And then there's there's a stenciling process. What would you call it? The decoration of the book? Is it gold well, I leafing? Think, um, I think um, there is a lot of steps to create a book. Uh -huh. You have to wait some, um, you have to, to see, just wait and 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 see what happens with your structure or when with your material mm -hmm. and i i have the uh, this is the, this paper sheet yes it was like well this is the first like the first step yes sometimes i i make editings with uh, free images you can find in everywhere and i just print but sometimes i just i'm used like this blank papers okay so, so sometimes you actually have printed pages and sometimes you use blanks yes. exactly okay and and then you have to ah to make this i i don't know if so, you can so, see yes so that's really the bot where the binding comes in yes exactly so when you have all these sheets together yeah and and how do you how do you create the punched holes what what tool do you use? What tools do you use to punch those holes? Ah, pin. I use all kind of needles. How do you get it through all those pages? Uh, it's you have to to make every hole in every single individual. In every single paper. Yeah, yeah, individual. You you can have like these two pages together. Uh huh. And then you 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 make the the hole. And how do you but make sure yes, that they're all? How do you make sure the holes are in the same place? Ah, uh, because you have to take uh, your your ruler and ah. just make like with a pencil or whatever you you sure. have. <laughs> yes. To, can can you wait? Can you go back a second? Can you show us a finished book and then let's go back and see the steps? Oh yeah. Well, I have these steps. This is like. So that's the cover. Um, Exactly. Oh, that's this so is beautiful. the cover. Yep. And and 
It's a very easy thing. You only have to three pieces <laughs> in here. Easy. It's not <laughs> well, easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, yeah. it's a little bit. And well, you have this. Okay. This goes into this. So, so you have all the individual pages. Then you have literally punched holes, and then you yeah. you bind them with with what kind of string? Is it thread or is it? I have a, a different kind of threads. I usually like to work with this. It's a cotton thread. Yeah. It's a Mexican oh, thread. Uh -huh. uh, also, I have this linen thread. Yes. And, and why like would you it. use different threads? What, what's one, what makes one more appealing for you to use? Uh, I think it depends on what kind of structure you will do. Because if you want a more strong structure you need a, a more strong a strong uh, thread and i think you always need to think um, the structure what, what you want to use and sometimes uh, i use whoa that's really thread. thick it's a natural fiber and i think it's and again it's a mexican thread natural thread and yeah it's just like you always need to think what do you want to, to create? Because that's why uh, I use different but you, kind but of thread. What you, meaning, meaning how strong you want the bind to be? What do you mean when you say it depends on what? Uh, just let me show you. Yes. Give me a sec. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? I did see the question and we're gonna ask her when we have a little bit of break of about um, whether or not she sells them. It is my understanding she does sell and is about to sell. So we'll get back to that. Okay. Well, I have these uh, examples. This is yeah. a, a, a big, a big book. Right. You have uh, a very strong structure. You have this sand band and you have also this. Yes. Ah. And I think you always need to think, what do you want to 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 create because that's why they say like you need to think always in in that kind of things is is it also are... about strength because some of those strings looked stronger than others yes yes exactly and this is a very very easy kind of book that looks it's like it's glued like... exactly just but glued. also have this sewing inside of the pages uh-huh and that's why I, I always like thinking in what I, kind of book I want to create. And well, this is uh, a leather. So, so those are books you've created in full size. I'm just realizing this right now. You're showing us you do full size books too. Yes, wow. exactly. I, I learned making the normal size book. Uh huh. And I just translate that in miniature. Yeah. Miniature books. And in the miniatures, you don't need like a very strong. Uh, a structure or, or thread, but oh. I'm just trying to recreate this, the same techniques. Oh, okay. So you wouldn't use that really thick uh, string on the small books? Yes. Right? I, I use... You do? See, I use you. You do? Uh, I use this... Yeah. Um, this is the, the more thinnest, thin uh, thread I, I have. So can we go back now to the, the little book that you um, that you showed, the... Yes. the, the the cover. Let's talk about the cover. So the cover is all made of leather, right? Where do where do you find leather material that thin? Uh, well, now here we have a, a very good store to sell any kind of of leather. Here I have like this. What, what are like they like antique leathers? Kind of leather. Excuse me. Are they antique leathers like used from before? What what? Or are they new? Um, these are new, but new. I have. Uh, um, I I bought uh, like a pieces of leather, just like for clouds or yeah, I, anything, anything. And and I I I don't I don't think I don't have too much like that kind of pieces. But presently, I bought these new new leathers to uh -huh. work with. So you work with new leathers. Is it, is it, how do you get it thinner? How do you make it thinner? Because those look like thick pieces. 
Well, this is a, uh, I think it's got, got leather. It's very, very thin. Ah. And I don't like to work too much with this because it's not that flexible. Uh-huh. Right. Um, well, because that's for your full size this, books. Uh, these details, I don't like too much because it's not like these details. Yeah. yeah. So and I think it's, this is a little bit more um, thicker uh -huh. leather, uh -huh. just a, a little bit. And I think this is from ships. And I like to work more with cheap leather. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cheap leather, inexpensive, right? So how do you achieve? Cheap, I think cheap, uh, the animal sheep. Oh, sheep, <laughs> not cheap. Oh, cheap, sheep, cheap leather. Not cheap. Oh. <laughs> yes. Sheep, oh, sheep. so you like working with sheep leather. Understand, I understand. Yes. Sorry, my yes. mistake. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> so, okay, can we go back to the little book and the cover? Because I want to show them the decoration. How do you achieve the, the embossing? The, the design of the leather? How do you well, get? Yes. Uh, I think you need uh, three important things to know about this material. Yeah. Uh, you have to work with humidity, uh -huh. pressure, or heat. It's very, very important to know those things. Uh -huh. Because when you know how leather works with humidity and pressure, you can obtain uh, beautiful design like this. Really? And I think, oh, just give me. A yep. I can I did, show you other that, things. That's very interesting. I That's really interesting learning for me. I didn't know that there had to be certain temperature, certain yes. humidity. Well, I thought, Is that yours? You made that? Uh, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's an <laughs> old uh, box. I see it. Yes. So this is um this have these details with uh, pressure and heat. Right. You can obtain that kind of details if you use uh, but, but those are heat. the same details you are achieving on the little book, on the small book. Yeah, I, I, I want to so, no it, so I, I, I use um a different uh, tools to, yeah. to make these kind of details. Yep. Laura, can you just do me one more favor? Show us the book again, but keep it in front of the camera so we could see all that beautiful detail. Yes. And just, just keep it there for a second so everybody can see that beautiful work. So does the front look, thank that's perfect. So now let's see the other side is, oh, the spine, look at that. That is just beautiful. So all of that detail, you're going you're gonna to tell us how you achieve all that detail, right? Yes. Beautiful. Just Thank beautiful. You. Well, um, I use different kinds of tools to make this kind yep. of details. Um, I don't have like a professional tools. But I, maybe I, in the I future. Think <laughs> as long as you are achieving that, it doesn't matter what you're using, you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I have these uh, metal stamps. Okay. With yes. Basic every, and I also use these tools. Yes. I think it's for engraving metal. Ah, uh, okay. What was that uh, first set? This belongs of... to my mother. <laughs> what was the she... first set of tools that you showed? Because those look common. Those look like common tools. These, where do you get? Where do you find those? Uh, I bought it on Etsy. But what are they used for? Are they used for, for bookbinding or for other crafts? Yes, I think you can use it for whatever you want. But for me, it works with leather. So each one of those punches have a different design on the end. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Yes. Ah, OK. And I think this is the most beautiful things. So are those leather punches? Are they called leather punches? Oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah. Ah, OK. That's uh, this is for. The bottoms you use in your clothes. Ah, for buttons. Yes. Okay, I see. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so 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 that's how you achieve the embossing. Do you call it embossing or you're calling it punches? I don't know. Punch. Mm, and maybe it's embossing. And each one, do you have to hold it down for a period of time before you move to the next one? Um, I don't know. It's just like, wait me a little bit. 
Uh, do you want to see another kind of tool? Or sure. Just yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, um, this is our. These are my favorite tools. Ah. My a folding bone, tools. A bone. What do they call that? It's a bone something. Bone. I just call it folding tool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, okay. And this is from Teflon. Yes. I think. We, we do have a question. Uh, is the leather wet or dry when you add that detail? Uh, you can work with the, the leather dry or just wet. You can have a different uh, kind folder. of details. <laughs> it's just like the box I, I uh, showed you before. Yeah. That was with just heat and pressure. Right. Uh, no, not, not a wet um, leather. And this is with a uh, leather and pressure. So you talked a little bit about the heat and humidity. So what is the optimal, what is the best conditions for making a miniature book and doing that detail? Is it, um, should it be hot? I mean. I think uh, I always try to work with different um, stations of leather. Uh -huh. I think I, I'm always trying to make an experiment to, with this kind of material because if you uh, explore uh -huh. that possibilities, you can know more about how your material is, is like working. Right, and, right. And yeah, I think I, I always trying to work with different kinds of stations of the leather. Right, right. Interesting, very interesting. I love it, I love it. Yeah, so, so it's called a bone folder. Thank you, Pamela. Oh, okay. And I think Donald it. also Thank had you. it. So you guys win a prize for that. Um, okay, so we went through the tools. You, you, so, so for, and we did have a question about, um, you know, for someone who wants to maybe try their hand at making miniature books, what are some, what's some uh, uh, advice you would give someone who might be starting new at this? What, what, what should they, what should they, how should they start? Um, uh, I think there is a lot of tutorials on YouTube that you can watch. And yeah. I, I always say, like, start with the basic things. You need to know the structure of a book. Uh -huh. um, you need to, to know the material that you can work with. And just, like, for the basic things. And you can also um, search for more after. Yeah. But always try to make uh, the basics. So... I almost like, yes, yeah. let's try it. Let's yeah, try it. So, so start small. There are tutorials yes. on YouTube you can find. Um, we did get a question about the kinds of paper you use. Are there any okay. special kinds of papers you use? Um, I, I usually, this. Is that like card stock? What's the weight? Um, no, it's uh, 100 gram. Okay. It's cotton, it's a cotton paper. So it's not like it's copy a, paper. It, it has a little bit of a weight to it, right? Like it's. Uh -huh, it's not like it's it's a very thin paper, uh -huh. but this is strong. Uh huh. It's very strong paper, and I like to work with this. Right, right. Just beautiful. Okay, so, um, so what's what's next for you? What what um? I know you're just starting. Do you plan to take commissions? Because we did get a question about commissions. Um. Uh, do you have a, 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 a an Etsy site? Are you selling your books? What is next for you? Well, uh, actually, I'm I'm selling some commissions oh, you... here in Mexico, but I would like to sell internationally. Uh huh. So maybe in not that far future, I will sell uh, my books. Right. In... So our, Other. we did get another good question. With, so do you collect as, as well? Are you always, uh, do you uh, look out for books that you can buy and acquire? No, I think I'm not a, a collector. No, interesting. No, because there is a lot of amazing uh, books and it's a big world. And I think, no, I can't, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> right, right. So what, 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 uh, I mean, what is, what is it that you love? What part of making the books do you love the most? Oh, is well, it I think I love the whole, every, the whole process. The whole process. Because for me, it's like very relaxing, make that book. Make a book. That's why I, I, I continue to produce 
a lot of different books. Yeah. And I think um, I love to, to to fold any page and then just choose what kind of in paper I want and and that kind of things. <laughs> yeah. We we, we didn't talk nice. we, we did talk about the decorative papers. That is another part of your process is is the decorative papers that are on the inside folds, right? And where do you find those? Uh, uh, we have also a, a very good uh, store that calls, I think, Papyrus Semeki. Ah. So you can find it. And they sell a lot of beautiful papers. Yeah. I think this is an Italian paper. Oh, I, I recognize that. Yes, yes. And it's beautiful. It they is. have it's a lot beautiful. of different kinds of, of papers. And Japanese papers and amazing, amazing things. Yeah. Just awesome. And where do you where do you keep your books? We did have a question about where you keep your collection that of books that you're making. I did. We did see in in one of your promotional photographs you have a little vignette with a little bookshelf. Where do you keep yes. your books? Um, so let's see. let's go to there. <laughs> oh, awesome! Uh, I prepared yeah. this little set. Just give me a sec. Oh, wow. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's lovely. That Let is just put lovely. put light here. I, I love it. I love it. That's, so those actually do look like they're 12 scales. Some of those smaller books. Yes. Yeah. Just give me a sec to put the camera in here. Yep. Oh, I just love it. I love it. And I love the book that's down on the on the... On the bottom. Uh, the open book? The open book, yes. Uh, yes, I know. That's Beautiful. just fabulous. And I actually, well, um, I really like the mix of the big and the little. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't all have to be little. I like the fact that you have big ones in there, big books as well as small books. Um, the, the, the light is good in here? Yeah, I think we can, see, we can see, yeah. I love okay. it. It's, uh, and I love the little drawers. Did you make that little bookshelf? Uh, what? Uh, Did you make the bookshelf that the books are on? Oh, yeah, this. Oh, it's I big. Bought Actually, this. it yeah. is bigger. Now that you put your hand in, it's bigger. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, perfect. Lots of um, positive uh, comments about the red spine books. Can we pull one of those out? Yeah. The red well, ones. I have <gasps> two. I have this. Oh, that is uh, just close. gorgeous. And the tassel, I'm, I'm crazy about tassels. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, here we go. Well, oh, this is a, a big, big book. That is beautiful. <laughs> so again, all of these have been made in the last year or so. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, oh and those have readable pages. And yes, it's exactly. And do you need any special printer? No, it's just like the common printers. Common printer. You only need a very good paper. Good. And... Ah, so that's the trick is the paper. Yes. And then the paper. And then what 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 sort of challenges are there? Ad advice you would give someone who's new like what not to do. <laughs> um I don't know, it's just like you always need to to feel the material to even if you make wrong things yeah the after you can see and, and and think oh yeah that's wrong or that's what's good and and i don't know it's just like feel the material work with the material and yeah, yeah just... oh i love it i love the edges too that's fantastic that is so great all right so what is so what are you working on now i know you showed well us I, i'm still um uh, i'll just let me show you this I recently made this, this book. The, oh, it's metal. Yes, I saw that on your yes. Instagram. Oh, so yes, that's- Yes, it's metal. How are you achieving that uh, embossing? Uh, I, I did this with these tools. Wow, and what kind of metal? These are, these are for metal. It's, I think it's aluminum. Aluminum? I don't know. Yes. Beautiful. You can work this with this and and well i need to show you <laughs> you can open the book 
Oh, that's just amazing. I love it. And I think this is like one inch yep. tall. Yeah. That's just beautiful. So that's new. <laughs> that's the new work you're doing. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you See, to make that? I'm book? always trying like with new materials. Yeah. I think the, the book binding gives you the opportunity to work with a lot of materials, mm -hmm. not only the classic materials. You can work with wood or, I don't know, just a lot of things. Just beautiful. And, and I also like this one. I saw um, um, this kind of book in the it's like a Gold Mary House collection. Well, kind of. Whose collection? In I try to. Uh, Dolls Mary House, oh. Queen's Mary. Oh, Queen Mary's. It looks like a yeah. journal, like a leather journal. Exactly. Oh, so you can I love that. Uh, open this. Uh, oh, my goodness. Difficult. Oh, there you go. Oh, you're killing me. That's crazy. So you can, you can open and, and I, I did these details with a burning machine, I think. Oh. Uh so it's, it's, um, I don't know. What do you even call that? Tinging? I don't know. That's beautiful. Yes, I love this. Oh, my Tiny goodness. friend. <laughs> and um, <gasps> this is paper. Oh, that's lovely. And you have content. Yes. Just beautiful. Is it two different kinds of paper you're using on that front cover? How do you achieve yes. two different kinds? This is Japanese paper. Japanese paper. And this is just a regular uh -huh. color paper. But one sheet with two different patterns? Yes. Ah, that's beautiful. Really beautiful. And, and I have this one. That's just lovely. Yep. And this is Japanese paper. Ah, oh, look at that. So how long does it take you to make one full book like that? Um, depends on the technique, but more or less four hours. So several hours. Several hours. Yes. Beautiful. Just great. Cynthia wants to know if you ever use satin covers. Um, yes, I think uh, this one have. This was actually oh, a commission. Look at that. It's like oh. a <laughs> So. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love see. that. It's like a metallic. Yes. Beautiful. And what is the latch made of? The latch. I see the on the side. The, the gold on the other side. Oh, this? Yeah. Um, this is our jewelry the objects. I use a lot of jewelry things because they are very small. Mm -hmm. And you can put this oh, in. Oh, oh, so in jewelry pieces, jewelry. Yes, jewelry. Ah, so jewelry findings. That's just gorgeous. Yes. Beautiful. Um, the, we did have a question about whether or not you teach. I don't, I don't know if you teach now, but it's, it sounds like there's interest. Maybe you'll want to teach later on. Oh, that will be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to teach because I had amazing teachers. Uh-huh. And they always was like oh, sharing all the knowledge. Yeah. And and maybe I want to make the same. Yeah. Because it's very beautiful to share yeah. everything you know. And and you and you do beautiful work. And there aren't that many miniature bookbinders out there. And so it, you know, when I saw you, I was like, this is just great. I'm so happy. That, that you're pouring your talents into this craft and this category, because we need more people like you who are doing beautiful work like this with books. It's just fascinating. Um, so as we yeah. wind down this interview, I want to know if there's any other questions. Um, yes, so, so there, the, we do have great comments about how um, you are a natural teacher. So yeah, I think that's great. Um, so, Laura, this has just been fantastic. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Oh, is this, wait, there's more. What is that? Yes. Uh, is that a calendar? No. No, it's just a watercolor. Oh, oh, <laughs> um, it's, 
So it's almost like a, a like a sketchbook. Yes, ah. it's, it's like a sketchbook. All right. So if people want to find you, they can find you here on Instagram. They can send you comments yes. and questions here. And you also have a Facebook page, right? What is the name of your Facebook page? Belmont Handcrafts. It's like the, the same as, ah, as Instagram. Perfect. And, and, um, and so folks can reach out to you for commissions if, you, if they're interested in, in having a book made for them, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I suspect you might be very busy after this. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> it would be amazing. Lord, thank you so much for spending your afternoon. This has been fantastic. And I'm so glad we we're finally able to connect and the technology is being is cooperating. <laughs> Did you want to put the camera back on you as we say goodbye? Perfect. Yes, yes, perfect. Yes. So thank you again. And thank you everybody at home for joining us and spending this time for this Meet the Miniaturist episode. And Laura, we, can, we can't wait to see what else you have in store for us and your beautiful work. Thank you so much. I'm glad that I met you. You, you did. You, you do awesome work. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, so the Instagram is Belmont everybody. Miniatures, right? Belmont Handcrafts. Yes. Right here. Yes. All right. Everybody okay. have a great rest of the day. Thank you.